Welcome back for more arms. I've been looking forward to doing this episode. We get to play Lollapop, my second favorite, close second favorite, you know, tying with Min Min, I suppose. But would that be second place? You know, because like when you, you when you tie in in a place like instead of the place above, you you both place below, and then you just vote that number. Isn't that how it works? Or would they both be number one? Let's say they're both number one. And Lollipop is like slightly a little bit lower than Min Min. Yeah, she's great. And actually, her. Come on. Why is it so tricky to do this? Her alternate palettes are really great as well. All evocative of different flavors of candy. But I gotta go with my personal favorite this one, because it's so rainbow and colorful and awesome. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Let's go level 7. Hi, from Via Dol Dol Dolce. The flavor that tastes the sweetness of the Orange Grand Prix is upon us. I don't know Italian! And who else would be here to share this action packed event by your buddy Biff? This time around, all eyes are on a clown who's not afraid to bust a few guts, Lollipop. After years of navigating the ruthless world of street performance, she's got plenty of tricks up her sleeve. But will that be enough to win the dough she needs to start a circus of her very own? You know what they say, that I'm's Grand Prix is for dreamers. And it's about to start! Yeah, so I actually was a little too busy this weekend to comfortably record more of this. So I've been waiting the whole weekend to play Solo Pop. Take it to the streets, this Solo Pop versus the Grim Creeper, Master Mummy. His preferred strategy preferred strategy of just being a massive, powerful brute hasn't failed him yet. Of course, Solo Pop can balloon up to his size instantly. Master Mummy has finally met his match. But can she make get him to crack a smile? Yeah, she can inflate herself, just like a balloon, and stretch her arms out just for you. Ooh. But yes, Lollipop, the clown, as many people may have already known her as, because she is. And if you know me, you know I love clowns, and Lollipop is why. She made me, well, kind of indirectly, actually, made me realize how much I like the idea of a clown girl. Because, okay, so hear me out. Before Lollipop came out, you know, she was when she had been revealed as a new fighter. There were some people talking about it on the Unstuck Reddit, naturally. And there was someone who mentioned that they once dated a clown. And then, I don't, you know, being American, most people tend to not think, I think most Americans tend to not give clowns much thought. So I definitely didn't give that much thought before. But having it be brought up, it's like, you know what, yeah. I date a clown, you know, someone who's just, who just really likes making people laugh. That's kind of what I am. I like making people laugh. I'm basically a clown, except I don't wear the makeup. So yeah, you can you can kind of say Lola got me into clown girls. You know, not not like not like the rest of the internet who thinks they're into clowns just because they like Garu Tonido. I mean. Geru is great, but, you know, I, I, I don't like memes. I don't like her just because of the memes. Not even a good meme. And it also kind of, it, it kind of sucks when, when a particular character becomes popular just because of memes. Because then people only, or well, not necessarily just because, you know, when the, when the character takes off, but not because their game took off. Because the same thing happened to Min Min with Smash. It's like so many people making fan art of, of or... I guess more so commissioning fan art of Min Min without really knowing who she is. But anyway, so Lola's abilities are, I was going to say a lot, I mean, maybe not as much as Max Brass. She has a lot of options, let's phrase it that way. Because while guarding, she can move forward and backwards and perform a high jump out of it, which I think probably... I don't know this for a fact, but I assume it goes the same height as Bite jumping off a bark. 
And she can also jump out of a... She can jump to the sides out of a guard, too. Well, oh, I wasn't sure what he was going to do there. I thought he was going to throw both the uh, both Megatons and, and kind of mess up my rush. But not that didn't quite happen, thankfully. What? Okay, I'm backing up. Here, she could, she could jump forward, backwards, or to the sides out of a guard as well. And it goes quite an extra distance, I believe. Or, or maybe it is standard dash distance for her, I'm not sure. Again, this is more exact particulars that I don't pay attention to. Because you don't really need to with arms. You just need to know what your strengths are. And your weaknesses, and try not to let your weaknesses be exploited. Yeah, Lola, Lola Pop definitely is a good first clown girl to get into, because she really does embody that idea of a clown that just really likes making people laugh. And you can really hear that in her voice, too. I've noticed that recently. Warming up to the crowd. It's Lola Pop versus the Ramen Bomber, Min Min. Min Min's saucy spin kicks are always a, a big hit with her fans. Of course, being a globe shining street performer, Lola, Lola Pop is an expert at charming the audience. Whatever happens, we know this. We're in for a show. I think I will go Funchuck and Bipler. So yeah, she can jump and dash out of her guard and walk forward and backwards while guarding. Ow. And she can do this to guard in the air. Which I believe only blocks one hit, so you have to be sure they're not coming at you with two hits. But it's more options than any character has. And as the wiki says... Every, every action she has is readable, it, you know, it's punishable in some way, but she has some way of reacting to basically any situation. So she is a, a force to be reckoned with, especially at mid. Or, or neutral, whatever the wiki said. And I am not doing well at showing her off in this fight, or the last fight really. It's the dragon. I, I blame the the dragon and the rom rom. This, this curving arm I have difficulty avoiding, and the dragon I'm not exactly the best at either. So the fun chuck is our finally our first instance of an arm that changes whether you're on the ground or midair. It's its own unique type of nunchuck style weapon. With only one other type like it existing in the game right now. Ow. And it is a stun element. And it spins... Uh, was that vert I guess you would say vertically? When you're on the ground, and then horizontally... Well, eh. Okay, I, I can see vertically on the ground, but horizontally... Uh, in the air, not quite a good description, but you, you can see the difference. It's, it's not hard to see the difference. Like, it spins like that. There you go. And I believe her... If not the debut trailer, then whatever in-depth trailer they, they used to talk about her after that said that it's something of a counter to curving arms. Because when it spins, you know, when you launch it from the ground, it stays in front of you and spins kind of guarding your side from incoming side attacks from curving art curving type arms and I have definitely seen it be pretty defensive in that regard but I would not say you could rely on using that spin does it spin if you don't have a try yeah it still spins ah come on there we go we gotta got a clap back Excuse me, yes, the good old clapback. It's a shield that, unlike the Guardian, it doesn't advance towards the opponent when that, in fact, I'm actually dragging it around with me. Moving it around myself in reverse. But it reflects your opponent's punch back at them. So it's, even though it's technically elementless, more technically, it's whatever element your opponent is using against you that gets reflected back at them. 
So of course, if I reflect the the Ram Ram, Newman's gonna get hit with fire because it's that's what the Ram Ram is. Okay, he's got the health event. Oh me, by a lot. Okay, I don't like timeout victories, but all right. I I, I guess since I like Min, it's better to get a timeout victory because then she doesn't get knocked out. Her brain is okay. So yeah, the uh, clapback, reflective, and if you charge it, then your opponent's uh, the, whatever arm it reflects will also become charged, whether or not it started off charged. It'll it'll get charged up when it hits it. Come on. Ow. And the Biffler is basically a blind version, a blind element version of the Hydra. It's lightweight. It shoots vertical shots, multi hits. And then if it lands when charged, it'll, it'll blind them with the Biff Stamp. Come on. Now, there's actually a post I did on the ARMS subreddit talking about what kind of clown Lola is exactly. Because you think, oh, well, a clown is just a clown. Well, no, there's, there's subtypes of clowns. And I did a post talking about what kind Lola could actually be. And I didn't think about that post until I was start just starting to record this episode. Whoa. Ah. So I have not refreshed my memory on what exactly I wrote there. But it got like a decent amount of decent amount of like attention to it, so I was kind of proud of that post. And basically, there's well. You, you can't even summarize how many types of clowns there are because, you know, there's... Clowning as an art is something where you have to make it your own to make it effective. Because if you're, if you're just doing what everyone else is doing, then it's not fun. That's basic comedy. I lost! It's a tragedy! Which also equals comedy, somehow, if you look at it from the right angle. Like, oh, I got a badge. All right, we'll, we'll go double fun checks and try to try to suppress her with some pressure. But mainly, I looked at the types of circus clowns because, really, yeah, a clown can be anything. So more more formally, I looked at familiar types of circus clown because that, that that really is what what Lola is. I mean, she's a street performer, but she wants to start a circus. So surely, if she's based her act in those forms of, 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 of clown. So the ones, at least commonly, there's like three types of circus clown. There is what they call the white face, which is so-called because of its white face paint. It's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not something offensive. Unless you're, unless you're afraid of clowns, of course. Then all clowns are offensive. But I've never been afraid of clowns. I, like I said, I've come to realize quite the opposite. But the white face is full face white makeup, basically. You know, they, they paint their face and their neck, as, as much neck as they have visible, all the way down to the collar of their shirt, all white, and they put details on top of that. Which you could kind of say Lola Pop is, well, at least with this skin. But it's only half of her face because because it's a mask. It's not actual face paint, so it's hard to say. But then there's uh, the red clown, or I believe it's pronounced Contra August. Counter August. Or no 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 no. Red clown is the August. And then the third type is Contra August, which is you know kind of the counter to the red clown. So the red clown is the one who messes everything up. Did I, did I say what type the white clown is? I'm getting so distracted because I'm in the middle of a fight. White clown is basically the leader. And then the red clown tries to follow his example, but messes up. And then the Contra August is the counter to the red clown, who unfortunately does not have a color associated with their makeup like the red clown and white clown. We could call them the blue clown, I guess. 
I don't know why blue was the first color to mine. I, I swear I'm not trying to make that me. I'm not inserting myself into this clown lore here. But the uh, Contra August basically is also trying to mimic the white clown, but is more, a little bit more intelligent about it, a little more successful, and cares more about the white clown's approval than the red clown does. So you could basically think of it as the Three Stooges. You know, Mo is the White Clown, because he's the leader. Uh, Curly is the Red Clown. And Larry is the Contra August. Because, uh, you know, Curly's the one who's always messing things up and taking things a little too literally. Whereas Larry is smart enough to know Oh, when, when Mo tells me shave the ice, he doesn't mean give it a shave and a haircut. He means to, you know, turn it into shaved ice. And like I said, I really should have reread that post to refresh my memory on what exactly I concluded Lola is. It's getting serious. Let's switch it up and play some skill shot. But I think ultimately Lola doesn't really fit any of them perfectly. Um, there is also like styles of clothes associated with each type of clown. And I, th I think Lola's clothes are a bit more akin to a red clown and her makeup is as well. Ugh. But, you know, you, you can assume with her wanting to start a circus that she would be the leader. So you could say she's more serious like the White Clown. So she kind of is a, a, a mix of all three styles of clown, I, would, I, would, I believe. And really, since, again, you really want to... You want your clown act to not be like everyone else's clown act. And since Lola performs solo, as far as we know, that it can it can be assumed that she's more like a you know her classification is street is street performer, a street clown. Or party clown. Where her her act is more based on herself than being in a in a, in a group of clowns and losing that skill shot. And I think that kind of is really what modern day clowns more are anyway, if they're not part of the circus, is they're just they're just clowns, they're just whatever they want to be. Which is the, the fun thing I find about clowns, like trying to, to think of clown designs for anything. Like if, like if I'm, you know, playing with ideas for like an RPG, you know, the, the, you, you could have the clown be anything. You could have the clown take up all, th all the main roles. They don't have necessarily just have to be tricksters. They could be tanks or or mages because really it's just it's just the look and the desire to be funny that makes a clown they don't necessarily have to be tricksters or complete idiots because really that's that's usually just an act anyway come on i forget we are on level seven so i am probably gonna be stuck here for a little bit because i'm not good at fighting high level npcs on skill shot on skill shot, in skill shot, I don't know. There we go. Let's just stop talking about types of clowns. Let's get through this. Get through this. Yeah, uh, I don't think I finished the train of thought. So yeah, Lola's clothes are kind of more like a red clown. Actually, yeah, I did. I did finish that thought, and then I was uh, talking about how like yeah, really modern clowns can be whatever they want. They can be any mix of. White Clown, Red Clown, kind of Contra August, especially when they're on their own. Versus the Spirit of Fighter Masango, whose fighting style can only be described as flashy. Well, with that colorful textile spear behind him. Then again, when it comes to capturing an audience, Lola Pop is no slouch. I can't wait to see what side the crowd is on when this one's over. Probably the side of the winner, I don't know. Hmm. I feel like I should go Bifflers here. I've, I've, I've loved clown. I love the idea of a clown 
girlfriends. Being so blunt with it, I'll just straight. So much that I, I even made my own. Actually, I've made several clown characters by now, but like right around the time Mobile Pop was coming out, I made my own based on what I was reading about clowns. And her name is Joey Grimaldi, based off of the, the guy who invented modern clowning, Joseph, Joseph Grimaldi. And that's why, uh, I don't even know if this is commonly known, but that, like, apparently clowns are sometimes referred to as Joey's. And that's because of Joseph Grimaldi. And you know, personally, I think I prefer the look of a, a white clown the most, with the full face white makeup. But there can be some good clowns without the, the full makeup. Th I think Eru doesn't have the full makeup. Pretty sure. She's, more, she's got more of the red clown makeup, which I guess I didn't say is not full face makeup, it's more just like, you know, around the mouth and the eyes. Which really are the only places to put makeup, I, I, I think. I'm not a makeup expert at all. Stop talking there, because I wanted to make sure I didn't get hit, because I really was one hit away. That was very close. Totally two indeed. Come on. I'm really not that good with Lola Pop, as you can tell. Like, I can beat this on level 7, but I, I'm i not really good at figuring out what situations her moves are best used in. Except for the ability to walk backwards while guarding. I like to do that one. When someone rushes, so I can safely get out of range. Because, you know, you don't want to just stand there taking a rush. Because it can break through your guard. Or at least will you down to set you up to have your guard broken later, after the rush. So if you can succeed in getting out of range by using Lola's ability to walk backwards while guarding, it can definitely save you some some guard health there. Alright, come on. I'm trying to think of anything more I could say about clowns that I've learned that people may not know. Now, apparently, the fear of clowns is really uncommon in Japan, which is why, well, partly why. No, I'm, I'm just questioning my phrasing there now. It's like, is it? Can I say that's the truth? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, in Japan, they're not as afraid of clowns, so they, the producers of arms were actually surprised to hear the negative reception that Lollipop had in America because the fear of clowns is much more common in America. Is that enough for a health victory? Yeah. And uh, the producer of arms, the main, you know, the, the head guy, uh, Mr. Mr. Yabuki, I believe his name is. Or Yabuki-san, I, I could, should, I don't know. He, he laughed and remarked that, I guess I found a new weakness to Americans. Or, or something to that effect. I'm bad at quoting people. And memorizing things in general. And talking. Match 5, halfway there. That's Lollipop versus the heiress, Ribbon Girl. Wow, the stage is positively gleaming under those big bright lights. Lollipop's used to having all eyes on her. But this might be the farthest thing from a street corner. Is this a battle or a performance? Either way, it's gonna be a show. Um. Now she's got the. She's got the slap a man. I don't know if I want to go with a clap back. She's probably slap around it. Man, I had a train of thought, and then I lost it. Oops. There we go. Gotcha. Ah, here, here's the thing. Uh, Lollipop's inflation ability. No one knows, because obviously the characters never take their clothes off. Or, ch I, I, better phrased, change their clothes. So we have no idea if Lollipop's ability to inflate is actually inflating her body, or if it's a trick of a costume. Now, given her introduction of, you know, the, 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 the introduction to the 
Grand Prix, her Grand Prix story, saying that Lollipop has picked up a lot of tricks in her days of street performing. You could argue that the inf that it's just her suit inflating, and that's oh jeez, you know, one of said tricks she's learned is the funny inflatable suit that makes her look like a ball. Come on, good, good. Okay, she got out of there. Just get good, ra get good, get good rush damage. That's what I was saying there. And then all I said was get good. And I'm not trying to taunt an NPC for not being good. She's on level seven. She's as good as she can get. Also, slightly related to the idea of her her suit inflating, being unclear. Her butt. <laughs> no one knows how big her lower body actually is. And I think a lot of fan art tends to think that she is, uh, thick, as they say. I don't necessarily agree with that idea because, you know, clown, puffy pants, clothes that don't fit well in general. It's part of the, the whole clown look, so I just assume that they're funny inflatable pants that are part of her suit, and her ability to inflate is also the suit. Alright, double sparkies, I feel more confident going clap back here. Come on. Wait for you to act. There we go. Oh, nope. I brought it down too soon. I was trying to get it to go forward and try to smack her out of a rush. Really didn't work out for me. <sighs> you know, what I would really like to know about Lollipop is, can she do anything else with her hair? Because we've, we've only ever seen Lollipop in this outfit with that hairstyle. Actually, no, that's not true. Their, her end screen does show her in a different outfit. And I think there's like a, a celebration piece of art that had everyone in formal wear. So I just proved myself wrong. But um, I don't think we've ever seen her with a different hairstyle. And I think all of her alternate outfits also show her in puffy pants. So again, what I was saying before about people not really in, people not really knowing her canon physique. But I would really like to see if she can do anything else with her hair. I would assume so, because Ribbon Girl can as well. And, you know, it it doesn't make sense that the one ribbon becomes multiple strands when she undoes her ponytail. I actually would like to see a design of Ribbon Girl that has more strands of hair in her ponytail, you know, fluff out the ponytail. But I like the Ribbon Girl we have. But, okay. Save myself from a couple of hits with my air... air uh, I was gonna say grab. Air guard there, but it wasn't able to block enough hits to survive the rush. Okay, yeah, I got the health victory again. Yeah, I definitely would like to see Lollipop in different hairstyles, because I'm not really a fan of this, I guess you could call it a bun? It's, 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 it's a lo lollipop, obviously. Yeah, it's like a lollipop just sticking out of the back of her head as I bump my head headphones gesturing on top of my head. You can't even see this gesture that I'm doing right here with my hand that might make you laugh if you could see it. I don't know. So I'm playing some hoops. Poops. Hoops. My voice is dying already. Okay. I can't do the poops. Oh, there we go. Couldn't quite hit the notes. I don't know why my voice is tired. I haven't been recording today. Maybe we'll start from yesterday. I was, I was commentating uh, on a friend's thing with it. With it. Well, I was gonna say with him. No, he wasn't part of it. He was. He had other commentators there as well. I was. I was one of two guests on that. But yeah. Anyway, I'm talking about arms. Gonna get. But uh, I was out of reach. No, oh, come on. I do know one. One thing that you can utilize all the possibilities for is sticking around with a guard, baiting a grab, jumping into the grab. I'm doing great. Yeah, you can you can bait a grab with the guard and then use her abilities to avoid it and counterattack. That's only if you're paying attention and being good. Oh, bouncing off the spring there. I didn't even realize I was in range. Get a dunk going. I mostly went with the uh, fun chucks here to utilize their ability to, to hit through the, the poppers. 
I don't know why. I, I feel like this, the vertical swing here, is well. Never mind. I say that as I get hit. I was gonna say, good at knocking down the poppers. Definitely good at getting down grabs because it's vertically oriented. I think vertical attacks tend to be better at getting grabs because they can't slip. It's harder for them to to slip up, you know, above or under the grab. <sighs> Losing at hoops by one one dunk. He got one dunk, and I well I I dunked. He got the what do you call it when it goes in from a distance? All right, there we go. I think she just interrupted herself with her own voice lines there. Man, we're at a half an hour of recording already. Did I lose that much? Hopefully I can cut that down. I always say that. I do long recordings and it's like, I hope I can cut that down, and then I can't. Who's laughing now, Mr. Hippo? It's Lollipop versus the man of mystery helix. Uh-oh. One of his favorite arms, the Blorb, supposedly tastes like delicious tropical fruits. Lollipop is known for her sweet tooth. But will a quick lick be worth the risk? Who will win? Lollipop or her candy cravings? Yeah, we hope hope she doesn't eat her own arms. That's not that's not fun. I'm not even sure if you could eat Lola's arms or her hair. Well, maybe her hair. I could believe being able to eat her hair. You know, she goes in to get a haircut, and, you know, you you set up, like, like some, some plastic underneath so that the, the candy doesn't fall directly onto the floor and you can eat it later. I could see that happening. Ice Dragon reminds me. Arms recommendations for Lollipop, according to the wiki. Anything that can keep your opponent at a disadvantage and at a distance. Which I think is weird to say, uh, you know, range stuff. Because Lola's good at, at at middle, they say, anyway. That is that is my understanding of what the strategy is with Lola. Which makes sense, because of her ability to jump forward or jump back as she blazes. She can stay unpredictable at mid, because you don't know if she's going to jump towards you or away from you. But range, that's, that sounds odd to me, because wouldn't you, want, wouldn't you also want something that could be good up close if you decide to jump into your opponent's face? I mean, I suppose that's a strategy you could do if you so chose, because there's nothing preventing you from doing that. That reminds me of a, of a, of a post I saw in Arm Subreddit, uh, like, around the time the game came out. There's people, or one, at least one person, talking about how... They wonder if tournaments will, or, or if, if tournaments should, uh, require you to use the default arm sets for fighters. Oh, I had I had the health advantage there. Because I can see what they're getting at, because the fighters might be designed around their default arms. But I think fighters certainly have, There, I think there certainly are fighters that are not designed around all three of their default arms where one of their default arms might not be so good for them in particular. And it does defeat the strategy of arms, because part of the strategy is being able to pick, you know, your attacks, basically. Which, again, something I love about this game, that you're choosing your fighter is basically choosing your defensive options. Excuse me, burping while I counter this rush. And then your arms are your attacks. I would like to see an RPG built like that, where you know you pick your class and that's basically your defensive options, and then your weapon is like all your your offensive options, something like that. Which is reminding me of slice and dice, but I'm not going to talk about that because I talked about that last time. Even though I did, I did forget a train of thought that I wanted to to express, but this is fine. It doesn't matter. Bringing it up now is not not necessarily the time, or maybe it is. I don't know. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pass up the opportunity. I'm gonna talk about something else. I I know I had something else in mind that I wanted to say and I forgot it. I think I, I think I was gonna do the the the, the joke again. It's like hey, let's talk about Lego again. How about how about we talk about Lego? But I can't I can't think of any Lego any Lego topics right now.
there's a stage I recognize. Spring Man! Match 8, deliver the punchline. It's Lollipop versus the Bouncer, Spring Man. He's famous for his fiery passion in the ring and his fiery toasters he likes to wield. Hopefully our candy clown doesn't melt under all that heat. Nah, she's fine. Yeah, that's one of those things that uh, Lollipop's setup definitely makes one question. You know, the... What would it be like living with arms and hair made of candy? It would probably be very sticky. And, and could you wash your candy hair? Or would that be bad? I don't know what it would be like if you washed hard candy. I, I suppose hard candy would not be particularly vulnerable to getting wet. Ow. Not like a sour gummy worm where getting wet would wash the sour off. I do wonder that about Lola's arms, though. Are they sour? She, they, they say she's got a sweet tooth, so maybe they're more licorice than they are gummy worm. Oh, he's got me in a corner. Can't use my back away strategy. Nope. I thought I had rush. I don't know why I thought I had rush. Get out of the circle. Oh, I thought that, that, that second one was for sure going to come up. And speaking of speaking of something that's bound to come up, nunchucks. I think I think Shadowversary's video on how bad nunchucks are might be gaining some traction recently. I don't I don't really know how big Shadowversary is, but I feel like someone talking smack on nunchucks is probably bound to make its rounds. And it's not like he's wrong. He has some points. But you know, it's, it's arms. They, they're not real nunchucks. They're they're fun chucks. That it, it doesn't ma it doesn't matter if nunchucks would be effective in real life. Ah oh, man, Spring Man got the. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go. Let's go double clapbacks. Because he's going double tri bolts. We could probably reflect those back at him pretty well. I think I've mentioned before, but the strategy with clap axe is a little tricky. You gotta find that right window of opportunity, not too soon, so that your you not too soon because your opponent would be able to to just be like, oh, well, you put it up. I'm obviously not gonna punch at you, but not too late, because as you can see, when I'm late, it knocks the punch down instead. I'll save you from the bomb. Or, or never mind. That was my that was my first grab. That my my second grab was the one that was meant to harm him. Yeah, come on. All right. I don't know why I said I'll oh, come on. Why was that the, the thing that whatever. Stop getting so mad at myself for the things I say. You know what I am mad about? I'm mad about all of the the places that people like to go evil clown instead of just regular clown. Like it's disappointingly common for people to just do evil clown. Like when I'm trying to find fun art or, or pictures of real clowns. And I just get mixed in there with people who just like the juxtaposition of clown and evil. It's like, come on. Evil clown is not that great. Yes, I know people are afraid of clowns. People are afraid of everything. People are afraid of sharks. It's like, what, the only, only shark movie we got was, like, Jaws. And that one Megalodon movie. Maybe it's, like, a... I know that's not literally all, but it's, like... And then again, how many how many evil clown movies have we done? It's kind of, kind of just it. That's it. It. But there's like two it's, isn't there? Maybe maybe the original had a sequel. I don't know. Or maybe the remake had a, had a sequel. I, I think that sounds about right to me. Nope, I did that too soon. And that's why curving arms are my nemesis. But yeah, it's just kind of disappointing. I, just, I try to find happy clowns and I get the evil clowns. Stop it. I, I don't like Pennywise. Pennywise isn't that great. I just want some honest to goodness people who like painting their face with a bunch of colors and wearing funny clothes to make people laugh. Is that so hard to ask? Without getting people so caught up in the juxtaposition of, of two things? Ah. Dang it. Ah, man, he's got the health advantage now. 
I got. I gotta get this rush. I gotta land this rush. Nope. Oh, oh, oh come on. Ugh, it wasn't enough. Did I seriously do better when I was talking? Gotcha. There we go. I think it was keeping my distance there that helped me finally beat him. But yeah, there we go. That's that fight. We're on to the semifinal. Ninjara. Mechanica. Match 9, bring down the house. The Solopop versus the Scrapyard Scrapper, Mechanica. One hovers using steady art technology while the other floats using the power of laughter. Could this tech clown showdown lead to a scientific breakthrough? That reminds me of a character I designed, uh, a superhero I designed once. Got this random flash of inspiration for Laugh Riot Police, as I called them. It was basically Iron Man, but with a clown theme. They got this, like, tank suit. I forget if their weapons were clown themed, but yeah, just, just a clown in a tech suit meant to be like Riot Police, but also laps. Ow. I had this idea for, like, a villain character that's, like, a wear clown. But they're, they're not happy about their the fact that they transform into, like, an evil clown. I'll do certain. I didn't. I didn't figure out any circumstances. I guess I was thinking. I think the original idea was uh, like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of deal. Where it kind of just. It just happens. The transformation just comes. Which I guess werewolves. Are werewolves like the only? It's the only mythical transformation I can think of, and that always happens. You know, moonlight, or a full moon, depending on what. Depending on the source. Come on. Da. Ah. I feel like the fun shucks are a good counter to ah. missiles. Now you want to know something something else that clowns give me appreciation for? It. It's appreciation for kind of I don't know what you call this trope, like the, like the kind of I get, like the Pinkie Pie type character. That's all I can think. Of. Like like the party girl from from Terraria, except I'm, I'm pretty sure the party girl is based on Pinkie Pie. Yeah, that type of character who who likes parties but only. More so as a means of making everyone happy, not necessarily partying for partying's sake. Like, that's that's a character type I still don't really like. The kind of life's a party kind of person. Just likes parties. What other what way is there to phrase it? You know, like a, like a, like a frat boy kind of character. I don't like that. So yeah, like, there's, there's more to life than partying, but I understand enjoying parties as this as this way of getting a bunch of friends together and making everyone happy kind of thing. Yeah, the fun chucks are... Because, especially with this, the hitbox of the vertical, or I guess I've been calling it the horizontal swing, the air attack makes them pretty good at knocking down the missile-type arms. All right. There's my TKO. Or no, not a TKO, because she didn't fall three times. Or she could have, I don't know, I'm not paying attention to how many times she goes up, but... Yeah, that's the, there's no TKOs in arms. That would be kind of a, annoying, but also I wouldn't mind a mode entirely based on that. Since it's 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 really easy to knock down your opponent in this game, because you just need to hit them twice. Or once with like 
a fire or explosive arm. Let's pick it up. Stay out of this circle. Actually, your, your rush is already full, so what am I, well, I care. Can you tell I completely lost my train of thought? Whoa, no! Okay, just stay down. Get out of the healing circle. With your super armor, you're basically recovering every super armor hit you've blocked. Play more defensively. Avoid her incoming attacks. Definitely look out for a yep, the rush. Alright, I've got this. Just don't screw up royally. Our clowns are kinda known for being screw ups. Which is is fair, because that's the whole gag of a clown act, at least in terms of like multi person. Again, look at the three stooges. They're basically clowns without the face paint. I, for, again, forgot I set this to level 7. Anyway, take it on max price like that. That's all. It's not spice for the. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. All that dialogue. This is is the same every time. Okay. Definitely a part that says yes. This was added post launch, and they maybe didn't have time to really flesh out different, you know, variations of this based on what fighter you're using. But that's okay. I don't mind. Because it's still a good fight, and Coil is a, a, a pretty well-designed boss character. Because she is, like I've said, people consider her top tier, so much so that she's in her own tier. She is considered probably the most powerful character in the game. So it only makes sense that she's a good boss. Biffler should be good at hitting her. Because it's, I think it's on the fast side, good for what they call pokes. Although in this game, I'm not even really sure what a poke is. Because I know in like traditional fighting games, you know, your your street fighting type deals, a poke is a fast light attack that doesn't deal much damage, or it doesn't deal much damage. Sorry, I had to fix my inflection there. I I care way too much about my my not saying things with weird inflection. And then instead I make myself say things with weird sentence structure. Yeah, a fast and light hit that doesn't deal much damage, but can check to see if your opponent is paying attention to their keeping their guard up. Not like me. I I lost this. But I'm not quite sure if that applies to arms. I think lightweight arms are meant to be basically like your light punches in you know something like Street Fighter. But I'm not really not really sure the stats all check out there. That that's something where I would be willing to ask, like you know, someone who knows this game more professionally, someone who's more familiar with all the like frame data and stuff. If light arms really are meant to be like light punches in Street Fight, Street Fighter, if they're fast enough to be good poking to, I would assume so because that that would be your that would be the deal with light. It's easily punched through, but it's it's fast and good for you know making sure your opponent's paying attention. Nope. Yep. There. Nope. Okay. Only 140. That's 
Well, okay. It seems uh, a bit more than a Biffler is usually used to doing, because I saw there. Yep. 80 and then two and then a 40, so that's 120. But that's not more than one single charged toaster hit. Or is that roaster? I forget. I want to say roaster. I think that's what it was doing. It hasn't been that long since I did mass since I recorded Max Brass. You would think I would remember. You would think. There we go. Oh, getting there. Ow. Good use out of that ability to... There we go. Knock down my light arms easily with that parabola. You know what? I'm feeling risky. Nope. Can't reflect the blast. It has to be the arm. The clapback is also good, pretty good at going through grabs, I've seen. Well, that's my experience with it. I'm not sure that any any arms are, are like, specifically set up to counter grabs. It really is just like, oh yeah, the hitbox is, is big, so it's, it's good at that. You know, like, Megaton, Megawatt. Like, naturally, they're just good at breaking grabs because they're big and it's easier for them to hit things. Which I suppose is the deal here with the the clapback as well. It's got that big circular hitbox. And I think there are some arms that are better at landing grabs than other arms, because I do remember one time where I got grabbed by an NPC and it was like, no, that, that shouldn't have connected. But then I looked at the replay and it turned out that the arm actually changed shape when they went for the grab. And I think it did actually make the hitbox bigger. Now, I'd, I've never seen anyone talk about that, so I don't know if that's actually a thing. But I'm pretty sure you can see on the triple shot, the horizontal triple shots, that they do get a little wider when you go for a grab. Because I believe when that, had, when that had happened to me, my opponent was using a tri-bolt, and the little sides came out to make the hitbox wider. And there we go. That's the hard part down. Because as I've said before, I honestly find the headlock part of this end sequence easier. Good luck, Lollipop. Laughter is the best medicine. I didn't get to read the rest. Ah! Uh, why can't they just make me wait? Or why can't they make the dialogue wait for me to press A? Okay. I'm definitely a fan of using the clapback against Headlock because he has so many punches incoming that is very likely to reflect one back at him. But guard shields, not guardians specifically, but shields in general, I find definitely can be tricky to utilize well. And I say that, and then I go with the clapback anyway. It's just satisfying to take out Headlock with his own punches. Of course, you got to be close enough for the punches to actually bounce back and hit him. I don't know if the range gets extended when they bounce. Excuse me. I think it, it does use only what range it had left. So if, if you end up bouncing a punch that's almost at the end of its range, that it, it can't possibly bounce back and hit your you know, return to sender. I think I have done, well, I've definitely done double clapbacks against Headlock on more than one occasion. And I think at least one time I won with that strategy. It's not effective enough to always win. Or at least I'm not good enough with it to always win. But it's definitely an amusing way to go. Especially when he decides to go, like, he goes all in on couple hammers when he's max brass and you just keep bouncing back the explosions. Well, not the explosions themselves, but all the, you know, the big hammers bouncing back at him and exploding when they, they come to, to attack. Got you now! Well, you're not dead yet, but got you with my rush.
Hmm. I didn't think about that before. Jumping before placing the clap back down? Oh, it does land. But that does make it a little bit easier to hit with it, I think. Especially with Dr. Coil floating. He's inclined to jump over, you know, to hover over your, your clapback and hit above it. You know, hit you by going over it. Chair, no one asked you. Shut up. You're not a good fighting game commentator, and neither am I. But I'm better than a chair. Gotcha. You know, I don't think I've ever heard that that voice clip of Lola's before. And we've heard that like three at least three different times in, in this episode. That's pretty good. It's like they say, you know, you're you always learning new you know, the best games are the ones you're always learning new things about every time you play through. Yeah, that thing about poking has got to be true with, with lightweight arms. They're they're definitely good at hitting headlock through all the punches he throws. Well, I say he because I'm referring to headlock, not coil. Because I'm pretty sure headlock is the one in control right now. Oh, there's another way. That the clapback can be good at getting you, getting you out of a grab. It's like hitting your opponent when the grab lands, so that they disconnect. It's like disconnect reminds me of the like, scam baiters. Because there, there was, it was I, I believe it was Kit Boga who has like a song he made remixing things uh, scammers would say to him while he's scam baiting. One of them was disconnect the call. Because they're telling him, like, oh, hang up, disconnect the call. I'm, I'm done talking to you, you scam baiter. And that's them getting mad when they realize that he's he's just baiting them. He's just playing them around just to waste their time. Gotcha. Uh, uh. But my, my personal tastes in scam baiters have kind of gravitated away from Kipoga. Like, honestly, I find his style is kind of stale. He kind of does the same jokes every time. Like, I realize you, you can't always get good reactions out of as scammers when you scam bait, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should use the same jokes every time. If anything, that's just going to make it more likely that you get the same reactions out of them that you've ever gotten before. But I'm more I'm more of a pierogi kind of person. Up. Oh. And actually my favorite scam baiter is uh Hoax Hotel. Because he's done some pretty funny stuff. There's there was one where he was connecting others like scammers in the same call center to each other. That is like my favorite scam baiting video. Especially the one where there there's the, the guy who ends up somehow connecting with himself during the whole thing so he's echoing how we help you how we help you how we help you how we help you and then of course there's there's the on-screen gags he does for me that's that's what really does it is, is the on-screen gags and making fun of them when they're when they're silent like uh, it's, i guess it's hard to describe at least i can't i can't describe it while getting hit in the face with the giant explosion come on no oh, I still got him with the stamp but was that super armor you shouldn't have super armor it's not on max brass get out of the healing circle torn between being quiet so I can focus and actually commentating, so there's commentary. I don't know if I'm in a good enough position right now where I can really devote any brain power to talking, although I am, 
and I'm I'm doing okay, but I may have just jinxed myself. So I will be careful with my moves here. Uh oh, no. Okay, he clipped me, but it's fine. It's not fine. It's my fault for choosing level seven. I really should have just focused so I could win. And I went the opposite route and I lost. You know what? I, I'm feeling a little committed to the strategy here. Nope. I'm going to dodge away from that. But not that, because I forget about that. Being a pain in the butt. Uh, I should stop trying to jump away from parabolas. On. I'm getting impatient now. I'm saying, come on, even though it's like you're, you're halfway through the fight. Like, shut up, come on. Stay out of my skit. Stay out of my stay out of my circle. There's one round. Tootly toot. Now here's something worth noting about Dr. Coyle, is that despite being floating, I believe she's always considered on the ground for the sake of arms that, that change. So when she uses the burr chucks, they're always the wide hitbox burr chucks. Get out of the circle! So, in this particular instance, since she's... Since she's going two bird chucks here, I feel more confident in selecting the clap back because it's, you know, their, their big hitbox is making them more likely to be reflected. You now! This time I mean it! The winner of the Arms Grand Prix and your new Grand Champion! The Sucker Puncher, Lola Pop. That belt does look pretty good on her. I can't wait till your circus comes to town. Congratulations! There's another arm to draws the clothes. I'd like to thank all the competitors and fans at home. See you next time, folks. I skipped a little too soon. I forgot they have a little victory. See? There's one of her outfits. The kind of ringmaster outfit. Again, still with the puffy pants. So her physique is still a mystery to everybody. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye!